What up? It's your boy, The Incredible Man, and yes, I'm back at it again. And I just watched Dr. Stone episode 17, and this is my discussion slash review for this episode, man. And it was absolutely wonderful. Last week's episode led us up to that point. But this week's episode got us there, man, and I was so happy. Um, if you guys haven't saw my theory video on Ichigami Village, you don't have to because we um pretty much wrapped, it, wrapped that whole arc up. But what I speculated happened, man, they had to come to Earth because they they just really, not the reasons that I said, because um I said they were going to have to stay in there because eventually they, they would have ran out of food, which would have been true, but they came to Earth anyway to just check out and see, they had to test a theory. And they came to Earth and they chose um, Lillian, um, I have to remember their names, Connie and Shamel. And um, they came in the pod and they landed off course in the water and... That's when the other three had to come down to rescue them. And I found that absolutely wonderful, man. This whole episode of Dr. Stone was completely different from all the other episodes that we've gotten up to this point. This episode was so much more emotional than any of... We don't get we don't get emotional from Doctor Stone like we get upset we get we get peaked we get a little intrigued we get a little mystery we get a little skepticism spe we get a lot of every we get a lot of other stuff but we don't get emotional in Doctor Stone but this episode got us emotional and I'm so happy it did normally you know we get all of the other stuff that's going on trying to figure out how to turn people back and how did this happen and everything but this episode was a complete backstory for the beginning of Ishigami Village and the founders and it was so emotional it took us through so many feelings I actually I actually teared up a little bit watching this episode man because it was just that emotional and they answered one of my questions I had all along some of these people were descendants of Senku and I was like well he can't really end up like or fall in love with any of these people because like they're his descendants. But that didn't work that way. Found out that Byakuya is is not his real father. He's a stepfather, but he loves him like his own son and everything. So that's what I'm saying. This episode was so emotional, man. So let's talk about this episode, man. So then we dive right into the whole episode and we see that Shamo Lillian and um Connie are stuck in the little uh pod that like left uh, the this, this space shuttle so they're crashed and they're and they're just floating in water and they can't open it because if they do then they'll start to drown so they're just stuck out there so then Byakuya and the other two I can't remember their names they decided they have to leave and go save these people and they were like well what if we land on what if we let what if we miss our course well that's just a chance we're gonna have to take because we have to save these people and they landed on their course Byakuya finds a boat, he gets out in the ocean, and he's, I mean, dude, dude is rowing hard, man. Dude is drenched in sweat, and his muscles just flexing. And he saves Connie, Lillian, and Shamil, and, or Shamil, however you want to say it. And and they were like, uh, and Shamil was like, uh, you're not an old man, you, you, you're you working too hard, old man. So I love their, I love their um friendship, man. You can tell that, I mean, they're the only six people that's left alive. And then after that, we get them back to the island, and we jump. Maybe a little, a little forward in time. I think it's three years, and we have Connie and Shamil getting married. We have the uh, the dude with the goatee and his wife. They already have kids, and I'm assuming somewhere along in that line, Bianca and Lillian had kids as well. And then we get into this whole theory. I mean, we have them celebrating the the wedding, and then we have um, Lillian start to sing a song. And let's be real, she can sing. She can sing. So she starts to sing a song for Connie and uh, Shamil's wedding or Shamil's wedding. And it was nice. She was having a good time and she was kind of reminiscent of her past and how she started singing and everything and realizing that they can't listen to music anymore because everything's turned to stone and all of the, the, the music won't be created. And I love the names that she mentioned. She mentioned Mozart and the Beatles. I mean, <laughs> that was a, like two different variations, but at the same time, two iconic things man i mean those that's music that we still listen to today and that's crazy um i mean you know if that's not your thing you know you're not listening to mozart or the beatles but so then we also get to find out that um this is this is where it kind of also got heavy in the episode as well connie caught pneumonia 
and the whole vi and, the, and 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 what's so funny is the symbolism behind it because they in no well, not the symbolism but like the the transparency behind it because they caught they, they caught pneumonia Rui Nee caught pneumonia in the new village it's crazy man I love that that Dr. Stone connected the past to the present and it's so crazy how they connected that and this whole episode that's that was kind of the running theme because we had Sinku thinking while he was stoned and his father pretty much thinking the same thing that he was thinking and working through all of the problems like how Sinku would and it's crazy and I love that fact and I love that they answered the fact also that because it was it was in my mind and it had to be in everybody else's mind as well somebody in this village like some of these people in this village are descendants of they're related to Sinku so but like they answered it because the Yaki is not his real father so then Connie, Connie dies, and it was so sad. It was, it was heartbreaking, man. It was so, it was so upsetting to see Connie die from pneumonia. But then we have Shamil or Shamil, and he's also sick as well, and he ends up dying from pneumonia. But before that, we have the the, the goatee and his wife. They're heading off the village, and it looks like a storm are brewing, and they head to the mainland to get some antibiotics for Shamo and uh, Connie. But the thing is, I'm assuming they had to die as well because we don't see them anymore. Like they're, they're heading off the island, they're rowing the boat and we don't see them anymore. So I'm assuming they died as well. That's what I'm saying. This, this episode was a completely different episode of Dr. Stone. It got so emotional, man. And then we jump back to the present and we see Sinku talking to Rui Ni and she's telling him about his father and... Uh, excuse me, about the hundred tales. And we briefly touched on some of the hundred tales and even how they started, but we never really dove into all of the hundred tales. We kind of just got a few of them and that was Biaka telling us that, you know, like maybe there's someone that's entered in stones and, and minerals and that's where we get Chrome. So I love how the past really connects with the present and, and everything that's going on. And he was like, I want to make friends for Senku. It, it, this whole episode was so epic, man. That's what I'm saying. We don't get emotional episodes from Dr. Stone, but we got this one and it was absolutely fantastic, man. And then we have Senku getting emotional. Senku hasn't gotten emotional this whole time, but this episode he did. He shed a tear. He even had the expressions written all over his face. And then we have, we jump back to the past and we kind of see, and we see Lillian die as well. And we see Biakta is the only one left alive and we have the kids running around and then we kind of jump back to the present and we see Senku thinking about his father and his father's mimicking the words and saying everything. And that's how this, that's how all of that pretty much wraps up, man. Dude, it was so good. It was so good. And I was so sad to see all of them die. I knew they were going to die and I knew they were already dead because we're, we're, we're living in the present with Senku and Ruini and Kohaku and everyone. But to see it actually happen and, and it, it really made this episode a little, uh, uh, so much more realistic, man, because we knew that they were already dead, but to see their life and then to see them die, it, 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 it kind of hit you. And I love to see the villagers was like, well, come on, chief, come on down here. This is your night. What are you guys doing up there? Come on down. And then I see the villagers uh, grab um, Gin, and they were trying to bring him back into the village. He's like, no, 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 I don't drink, because if I drink, I won't be able to tell you what I have to tell you. And I was like, what does he have to tell you? So then we jump straight to the end of the episode after uh, Senku was, was done kind of <sighs> handling his emotions and kind of mentally talking to his father. We get like we get a shocker. We're like, oh, this episode was nice, calm, cool, and collected, and we were dealing with all of the the aftermath of finding out everything about the six astronauts and, and how they uh, came to start the village and everything, and 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 we were going through our emotions and we were feeling some type of way. I know I was, and then Gen comes and tell us, Sukasa's coming. He's coming here. So, dude, oh man, this that's what I'm saying. People, oh, Dr. Stone is so fantastic. It gave us emotion it gave us everything that you wanted to feel in an anime in this episode and 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 even characters that's dead and we still want to see them and find out what's going on and that's epic man dude that is nothing but fantastic writing for them to make me care about someone that's long and dead in, in an anime and i need i want more of this story right now and dude that's so crazy and then they jump and tell me 
Then Sukasa's coming to the village, and Suka was like, well, let's show them the village of science, dude. It's, it's gonna be epic, man. This is your word, incredible. Don't forget to smash the like button. You can't smash it anymore. Comment down below, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life. And Dr. Stone done it again, man. It was nothing but greatness, man. Peace out.